united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. God bless you and welcome to United with Christ. I'm your host, Elder Christopher Brooks, and I am excited today to come to you once again to be with you, to share uh, what the Lord has placed on my heart uh, and to bring to you today. I am excited because I believe that God has something very special in store for you. He says, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have concerning you, thoughts of good, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And so today, uh, we're going to come to you today uh, just to share the word of God, to encourage you. I pray that what we have to say today is just going to help you in your walk with God that will help you to live that abundant life that he has called for all of us to live. Uh, so today, if you have prayer requests, if there's anything that you desire, we ask that you just give us a call. We're here to believe God for you and with you. And uh, I'm just ready to get into this word. I believe that God has something to share with us today. And uh, again, if you desire prayer for anything or a testimony, anything that goes that you may be uh, wanting to share with us, uh, we look forward to those and those are truly a blessing to us. Uh, so let's just open with a word of prayer and then we're going to go into the word of God. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this is the day that you have made. God, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, I thank you for those that are watching right now. I pray, Lord, wherever they may be on their jobs, God, at home, uh, even just listening, God, uh, wherever at work, wherever they may be, God, I pray that you would bless them now. Let your word come forth and come alive, God. Let us hide this word and put it in our heart, God, that we might not sin against you. And we thank you now for those that are watching and those that are listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so today I want to talk to you for the next few moments uh, asking the question, what do you need? What is it that you need? And we know that uh, when we accept Christ into our life and we're born again and we have gone from, uh, from being what the Bible says an enemy of God to being now called the sons of God, that that is one of the best decisions that we could ever make for our life. That is one of the greatest uh, choices that you could ever make that will literally change the very course and direction of your life, your destiny and your purpose. It is to, to have that true relationship uh, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, uh, but there's some things that if we want to really uh, be able to live that full life that God has called us to live. If we want to truly have that abundant life he's called us to live, I believe that there are some things uh, that each of us need. And so I'm going to share with you five things that uh, that God has placed on my heart to give you today. Uh, our, our main subject or our theme scripture is going to be coming from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I'm reading this from the Message Bible uh, just because I like the way that it reads and the way that uh, it really just comes out to us. It says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. I place before you life and death, blessings and curse. Choose life so that you and your children will live. Thank you, Lord. And love God, your God, listening obediently to him, firmly embracing him. Oh, yes, he is life itself, a long life settled on the soil that God, your God, promised to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I love where he says, I've placed before you life and death. And then he says, choose life so that not only you, but your children, your family, those that are connected to, to you will be able to live. And so uh, this is something that we talk about, what do we want? What is it that we need? Uh, you know, I, I want to go through these five things because I believe that when we talk about this, it's going to help us to be able to live that life, uh, that great life that God has called for us to live, that he has created for us to live. As believers, our job is to be salt and light in this earth. It is to be that example to the world, to let them see that Christianity and being a believer uh, is not something, uh, it's not a life full of defeat. It's not a life full 
cycle of sickness and poverty and, and just one failure after the other. But, but to be a believer and to be born again means that now we have access to the kingdom of heaven, that we have access to live the life, that God way of living that God has called us to live, a life of prosperity, a life of health, a life of blessing and not cursing, a life that is full and rich and satisfying. One of the things our aim at our church at Destiny Family Christian Center uh, is that our purpose is to lead people to a rich and satisfying life through a growing relationship with Jesus Christ so that as you grow in your faith and as you grow in your walk with Christ, your life should resemble that. Your life should reflect, uh, it should reflect your, your spiritual walk. So as you're, as you're growing and maturing and as you are prospering in the spirit, so should you in, in, your, in your everyday life, in every area. And that's what these five things, I believe, are going to help us with. So the first thing that we talk about when we're talking about uh, what do we need, the first thing we need is we need affirmation and validation. We need affirmation and validation. And uh, in, in, in this world system, so many times people get stuck and get trapped and the enemy uh, tricks them into feeling like that they have to be affirmed or validated according to the world's way of doing things. The world says that you have to step over people and you have to do all these other things that may not be ethical and may not be uh, and that will be contrary to the word of God if you want to be successful. The world has their own definition of success. But how many know that that the world's uh, definition of success is different from what God looks at as being successful? And the world's way of doing things is different from God's way of doing things. That's why he says in the word of God, he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of being and doing right. And he says, then all these other things will be added unto us. But we need affirmation and validation. Uh, you know, in Matthew chapter 3, in verse 16 and 17, it talks about how when Jesus was baptized, before he did anything, before he started his ministry, he was baptized. And when he was baptized, the Bible says uh, he came up out of the water and all of a sudden the heavens were opened up. It said the spirit of God descended uh, like a dove and all of a sudden God began to speak. And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What better validation, what better affirmation than to come from God saying that I am pleased with you. We just celebrated Father's Day and, and, and you know, as, as men, a lot of times we want to be affirmed and validated by our fathers. And, but here's the thing. How many know that there is no greater validation, there is no greater affirmation that you could ever receive than for God to say, I am well pleased with you, to look at your life and say, I'm well pleased. Yeah, you may not, you might not be perfect and we may have some struggles and I know I have some challenges that I, every day of my life, I have to seek God and ask God to help me grow and help me develop and help me mature. But he looks at our life and he looks at our heart and he says, you are my son, you are my child child in whom I am well pleased. And that is the affirmation. That is the validation that we have because when you have been affirmed by God, when God says that he's pleased with us, then it doesn't matter what people may say or what people may think and, 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 and what things may come up in our life. And even at times when we miss the mark and even at times when we may fall short of the glory of God, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. But the good news is that God loves you with an ever lasting love and God has called you and he has qualified you for a time such as this that you would be that salt that you would be that light that you would be the ambassador of Christ in this earth to be able to speak a word of life to those that are hurting and dying and are lost and are walking in darkness you are the light that God has called to bring forth people out of darkness and into this marvelous light that's the affirmation. That is that validation that, that, we, that we all need. And that is what his word says about you that are watching here today. And you can be excited. You can have joy. You can have peace. And you can find comfort in knowing that God loves you with an everlasting love. And he says, you are my child in whom I'm well pleased. The second thing that we need uh, is 
we need to add more self-care to our everyday life. It's one thing for us to go to church and going to church is good and going to church is needed and going to church is necessary. And we have to feed our spiritual man. We have to be spiritually healthy and, and, and get ourselves full of the word so that we could share that word with others. We have to take our time of, of time of consecration and time of prayer and, and time of, of, of learning and being able to know the word. David said, that word have I hid in my, in my heart that I might not sin against thee. But there's all also another aspect that God wants us to take care of, and that is this body. We have to take care of ourselves. What does that look like? That looks like, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm stepping on my own toes, of getting good sleep, of eating, eating the right things, taking care of our body. A lot of times, and I'm going to share this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, it says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. And a lot of times we associate that with, with right, with righteous living, and we have to, we must live right. A lot of times we associate that with, like I said, feeding the word of God and, and the, all the do's and don'ts of what we should and shouldn't do uh, with our body. But there's also an aspect, I believe, that God wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be, uh, the Bible says that he wishes above all that we prosper and be in good health even as our soul does prosper. Just like our living right, making the right decisions and our attitude and all these things are, good, are a reflection of our spiritual walk, I believe that our physical being, our, our physical health also is a reflection and also should be an example to others that we can live a life of, of being healthy, that we can live a life of being, of, of having rest, that we can live a life to where we can have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. And so with that, God gives us wisdom on how to care for our diet, to exercise, to do, to do the things that are going to help us to be able to, to maintain uh, and have longevity uh, in ministry, in our careers, and in our relationships. You know, one thing I've learned as being a, a speaker and, and being a, a preacher is that it can it can take a toll on your physical body. That while the spirit is high, everything is great, and you're feeling good, and you're singing, and you're dancing, and you're preaching, and everything is great. But then, you know, when, when you go home, your body begins to take the feel, the effects of all that, and you have to be in some good physical shape. And so we have to take care of our body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. So at this time, we're going to share, we're going to take a quick break, share this video, and we're going to come back with these five things that we need. Watch this. God bless you. God bless you. I'm excited to hear. This is such a good uh, lesson, what we're talking about. I pray that you're getting something from this. Uh, we're talking today about five things that we need. Uh, we talked about how we, we, are, we need affirmation and validation. And we know that that comes, the greatest affirmation and validation that we get comes from God. We talked about the second thing that we need. We need to add more self-care, that we have to take care of our body, that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And just as we have to take care of it spiritually, we should take care of it physically as well, emotionally, mentally, everything, every part of us. We have to take care of that. The third thing, when we're talking about the five things that we need, the third thing that we need is we need each other. We need each other. One thing about it is that we are the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ, as the church, the ecclesia, we, the ones that, are, that are, have been called out of darkness and into his marvelous light, those that have been, that have been rescued from the, uh, from the pits of darkness and hell and death, and we have been taken into now being called the sons of God, now being called a friend of God, we are now here uh, together. Uh, and we need each other. There is something that, that you have. There is a testimony. There is a, something that you, that you, a gift that God has given you uh, that will bless the body of Christ. He has not called any of us uh, to just do this life alone and by ourselves on an island somewhere feeling as if that nobody would be able to relate to us or nobody will understand the things that we're, that we're dealing with or going through. But when he has called us, he called us into a body, into to have unity with one another. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, 
talks about the early church and how they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Uh, they devoted themselves to fellowship. It says, and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. It says that everyone, pe the people were, uh, the people of that time were in such, uh, such amazement with just how 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 uh, unified they were, of just how how all of the believers, how all of the Christians, they were so together, uh, and, and how they were able to see all these miracles and signs and wonders that came, because the Word of God lets us know that where there is unity, God commands a blessing, and so it talks about here in, in Acts chapter two how they were all together and they had everything in common says that they, they uh, nobody was in lack, how they would even sell their possessions so that others wouldn't be without. It talks about how uh, they broke bread going house to house and fellowshipping together and worshiping together and said that, said that the church, that the Lord added uh, to, the, to the church daily those that were saved. And so we see that it is a biblical principle that we do life together. I know sometimes that may sound like a cliche, but I'm telling you that is a biblical principle that we need each other. You know, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter four says that two are better than one. It tells about how how uh, that if 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 you're by yourself, how one can uh, if, if it gets attacked, how one can fall, but two together will be able to stand together. We'll be able to help pull each other up. The Bible lets us know that one, and when it comes to spiritual warfare, that one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. That God, he multiplies. When we come together, God will begin to multiply and begin to magnify our steps and begin to magnify the work that we put when we mix it with our faith. That together, when we come together as the body of Christ, he says, where two or three come together in his name, he said, I will be there in the midst. And so there is verse after verse, there's scripture after scripture to let us know that we need each other. We may not always understand. We may not always agree. We may not always because we have different personalities and different things that we're going through. But at the end of the day, we need each other. One of the greatest tricks of the enemy is to make you feel as if nobody will understand and will try to cause you to isolate. Isolation is one of the biggest tricks that the enemy uses to deceive God's people. I, you know, and I've talked about this before where it seems like that, you know, before we got saved, you know, we would have conflicts with people, you know, or people may go to a club and they have conflicts with people, but then the very next week they're right back at the same place. But then we come over in, into, into the church, and the minute that we have a disagreement or something doesn't work out, then uh, the enemy wants us to begin to isolate and will run away. But how many know that when we come together, we draw strength with, from each other? We, we, we are able to, to be able to, to reconcile and be able to, to have victory over those things that the enemy would try to defeat us in. And it happens when we come together. Why? Because we need each other. And that kind of takes us in to the fourth thing that we need. We need a safe place to unmask. You need a safe place to unmask. A lot of times, whether it be in the, in the workplace, in the community, different things, we have, to, we have to wear all these different things. We have to, to wear all these different hats. And we have to do all these different things uh, to, to be, uh, it seems like, everything to everybody. And you need to be able to have a place where you can just let your guard down. And you can let take off the mask and you can be transparent and be in a place that you know that you're safe and that you're going to be loved and that you're going to be accepted. And that comes being part of a body of believers. I often tell people that there's no substitute for being part of a, of, of a body of believers, to be part of a church. And I thank God that we have things like television and, and we have, you know, uh, you know, streaming, and we have all these things that we can do uh, in, in times when we may not be able to physically be in, in, in a setting, but there is nothing like being in the room. There's nothing like being there physically in the place uh, where there is worship going on and the word is going on and the power of God is moving. There is nothing like it. I can imagine on the day of Pentecost, you know, and the Bible says that they were all in the upper room in one place with one accord. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit began to move as a mighty rush, uh, rushing wind. 
And there was something that happened for those that were in the room versus those that may have just been in the street and they may have heard heard a noise and they heard some things and they may have may have say, said, man, you know, these people, they must be drunk. But but they, they, they thought maybe they were drunk because they weren't in the room to experience what they experienced. And so you need a safe place to be able to unmask. And when you find a good Bible based church, when you find a church that's going to love you and that's going to welcome you, it's going to make you feel a part and you'll be able to be not just a member and not just somebody that just that just sits in a seat, but you'll be able to really take ownership and be able to participate in that in, in ministry be able to do that and be able to understand that hey I'm in a place not full of perfect people but people just like me with 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 struggles and with challenges but we're but we're crying out to a perfect God that loves us with unlimited love then when you get connected with people like that with a passion for God's presence I'm here to tell you that there is strength that you will get there is joy and there is a peace and there is power that you will experience that you can't experience anywhere else. And so we need a safe place to unmask. And the fifth and final thing, we need to be pushed. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 says, The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 27 uh, and 17 that iron sharpens iron. You need somebody, a mentor. You need somebody that will, that will minister to you, that will push you into your place of purpose, into your destiny. Somebody that is going to speak life to you. Somebody that is going to speak the truth to you. You don't need somebody that's just going to tell you, oh, oh you're okay, you're okay, and, and tell you that everything is good and everything is acceptable when it's not. But you need somebody that's going to love you enough to tell you the truth and also love you to walk and do life with you. But you need somebody that's going to push you out of that comfort zone. Somebody that's going to agitate you to the place to help you to, to grow in your faith and help you to step into your purpose and step into your God assignment that you can live the best life that God has for you. And these are the five things that, that I believe that we all need. When we talk about these five things that we need uh, affirmation, we need to add more self-care, we need each other, we need a safe place to unmask, and we need to be pushed. I want to pray with you right now because I'm believing that when we can adapt these five things, that God is going to bless us, and he's going to take our life to another level. So, Father, I pray now that you would bless those that have watched today. I pray, God, that we won't just be hearers of your word, but, God, we will be doers of it. I pray for the one watching right now, God, God, that needed this word, that may be watching, God, that you would strengthen them, encourage them, keep them. And God, I thank you for their best is still yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you.